Houston, we see you on a stereo. Conspiracy. Lies. Truth. Helping you understand the lies of the world and see the truth of the Bible. Welcome to Celebrate Truth with your hosts, Robbie Davidson and Pastor Nate. Hey everyone, it's uh, Celebrate Truth Radio. I'm your host, Robbie Davidson. We've got an amazing show for you tonight. We've got a special guest, Joe Garcia. We're going to be getting to him here shortly. But I just wanted to announce that if you're not uh, familiar with this show you're in for a big surprise there's nothing like it on revolution radio so keep keep uh, tuning in because uh, we are going to take you on quite the journey i want to make sure that i get on my awesome co-host pastor nate pastor nate are you there and how is everything going i'm here man i am i'm doing well had uh, had some adventures today but uh, other than that great <laughs> You're doing awesome. That's yeah. wonderful to hear, man. And hey, what uh, what's the weather like where you're at? It's kind of cold here in the weather report in Canada. We got lots of snow. What about you? Yeah, man. Uh, we've had about eight inches of snow since last night. Uh, we've got uh, some wind coming off of Lake Erie out of the north, which means for very cold wind. And it's blowing snow drifts all over the uh, country roads. So not a great day to be out. In fact, uh, We've been under a, a, what they call a level two snow emergency today. So uh, level two is you should only be on the roads when you have to be. And uh, once it gets to level three, it's uh, EMS, you know, emergency services only. So pretty bad stuff. Wow. Well, I know here in Canada, we've got lots of snow and cold. You, uh, I guess in uh, Ohio, you've got lots of snow and cold. Let's get to our special guest tonight, Joe Garcia, because... As the Celebrate Truth Weather Report, let's just find out what's going on in California. Joe, how are you doing? Hey, pretty good, guys. How are you doing? Doing great. Yeah, you know, the weather out here, um, it's, it's it's fair. It's, it's not too great. A uh, little sunny. And I think it was about 74 to degrees. Oh. Um, it's, you know, it's uh, clear. Um, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. <laughs> wow. Yikes. Yeah, well, that's uh, that must be really nice because uh, we're actually freezing and uh, a lot of snow. Actually, just before the uh, the show tonight, I believe Nate was uh, helping someone out uh, getting out of the snow. Nate, maybe you want to mention uh, what happened there earlier today? Oh yeah, so my son was uh, about fifteen minutes out of town in in the in the boonies, and uh, <laughs> he calls me. Uh, he's like, Dad, you know, can you come get me or whatever? And He's like, there's snow drifts and I can follow you in. Well, I thought he was, you know, sitting in a friend's driveway. Well, halfway, uh, you know, halfway through the conversation, I realized he's uh, in the snow on the side of the road. He's not in the ditch, but there's a huge snow drift that he's stuck in. And he's just, you know, making light conversation. So finally, I'm like, OK, we're coming out there. So my other son and I took my wife's car, which is uh little bigger it's a chevy traverse four-wheel drive and uh, we took a couple of snow shovels with us and we dug them out got them on the road and uh basically you had to go down the kind of you know weave around uh in between the two lanes to get away from the snow drifts and it was so bad at one point robbie it got to the point because my son has a little front wheel drive buick and i was like you know just a gnat's hair away from saying dude ditch the car get in with me we're out of here because if we had stuck around for, you know, probably another 30 minutes to an hour, I bet you most of the road was covered in a, in a big snow drift. So thankfully we got his car home and, and my car, everybody was safe, but man, I got home, my feet were frozen and I was, I was beat. <laughs> well, yeah, it seems like quite the ordeal, but uh, anyways, we've got our special guest, Joe Garcia sitting in sunny California and it's a yeah. real pleasure to bring Joe on. Uh, I'll let him talk a little bit more about uh, how we got to know each other and basically the connection there. But uh, anyways, it's a great pleasure to announce Joe, the uh, organizer of Question Everything 2019 happening in February 22nd and 23rd. Joe, maybe you can talk a little bit more about Question Everything. Oh, absolutely. And thanks again, Robbie, for having me on. And it's always great to talk to both of you guys. Yeah, the Question Everything conference uh, for 2019, uh, it's the first ever Question Everything conference. Uh, it's February 22nd, 23rd, like you said, in Yorba Linda, California. And, uh, you know, we're going to do things a little different. We're going to have um, a bunch of different topics that we're going to be talking about. 
things like scientism, of course, uh, featuring Robbie Davidson, uh, 9-11, uh, which is interesting because there's you know news about that with the grand jury being convened to, to look at 57 pieces of evidence that there were there was the presence of explosives in the building. So that's that's huge to keep that that uh, that story in the in the forefront of people's minds. Is that was a terrible terrible tragedy that happened against uh, humanity that day. And uh, we're going to be talking about the moon landing. So um, Paul on the plane and Scott Henderson will be talking about that. Um, you know, in subjects like CBD and vaccines, kind of lumped into um, the category of big pharma and pharmaceuticals and medicine, um, and really they're they're not helping people anymore. So products like CBD and cannabis derivatives are huge, and and uh, so many people are are finding healing and pain relief through these naturally God given um, plants and herbs that. Uh, He's put on the on on Earth for us to use. So Al Morenton of Movita Oils will be talking about that. He comes from a background of uh, glaucoma. And he's had glaucoma most of his life, and it uh, nearly ended his life until he found uh, the solutions that he's uh, put together in Movita Oils. It's been life saving for him. So he's going to be talking about that and a lot of other uh, natural products um, for us. So it's it's a it's a great topic to talk about. Um, Christina Hildebrand is going to be talking about. Um, vaccines and what you know, parents' choice and rights, and just so much information um, daily. We're getting deluged with all this information about vaccines, and none of it's good. None of it's good. So she's with a voice for choice, and uh, she'll be talking about that. And she's going to have a table um, to answer. I'm sure is going to be a lot, a lot of questions about that from concerned parents. Um, you know, government uh, and NASA documents. Uh, Pastor Dean Ole is going to be talking about that. Reviving a uh, and re refurbishing the uh, talk that he did a while ago, um, talking about governments and space agencies and you know the army and military all know that we live on a flat stationary um, plane and uh, they all their calculations for space flight quote space flight uh, missile launches all that stuff we're going to be talking about that um, spiritual warfare is going to um, Jared Cressman's going to be talking about that. Um, and of course, you know everybody's favorite topic, uh, biblical cosmology, the flat Earth, and uh, all the new things that have come out about that. So we we'll have Mark Sargent, uh, Chad Taylor, um, and Nathan Roberts talking about that. We we'll have Nathan Thompson hosting the VIP lunch, which is that's a really interesting thing too. Is you know all you guys going to be together? We're all going to be together in a room having lunch, sharing a meal together. But it's going to give the attendees an opportunity to. The, to sit with you guys, ask some questions that they might not, you know, do in another forum, and uh, they'll be getting some special gifts for attending that. And again, spending time with with the speakers and just being able to download one to one is just uh, a priceless opportunity. I, I'm excited for that to spend that time with you guys. And uh, of course, uh, everybody's favorite Matt Long is going to be there. We'll be kicking off a uh, conference um, with a great, great message. Um, so I'm excited to be an attendee to this thing. And, you know, Robbie, more than anybody, how long this has been and all everything that's gone into it and the ups and downs. And here we are 30 something days away. And uh, mm -hmm. I can barely I can barely sleep. Tell you it's that. exciting. You know yeah, I do know what it's like. And for people that aren't aware, I uh, uh, plan the uh, Flat Earth International Conferences. And Joe had reached out to me and we've uh, been able to talk a lot and. And, uh, you know, bring I lend support to a lot of different conference organizers. But uh, again, it's been a long time coming. But I had mentioned to Joe early on, I'm like, well, watch how quickly it comes up. It creeps up on you pretty quickly. And here we are with well, 30 days. Uh, let's, uh, you know, with all those amazing topics, and I know that a lot of people listening in, you know, with this, uh, you know, with the Revolution Radio, they talk a, a lot, you know, in uh, in regards to, you know, many of the to topics you discussed. I'm sure some of them will be new. Uh, I think getting into the moon landing, uh, getting into the whole flat earth thing. I mean, um, it is pretty surprising that people in 2019 can even talk about the earth being flat. But before we get into even the, the crazy out there stuff, let's go back to 9-11, because I think it's really important. And I want, you know, Nate and everyone here just to kind of maybe give their thoughts on it, because I think for many, many people, 9-11 was a, a huge wake-up call to the fact that there was a lot of um, actions and different things going on behind the scenes. There were before that, you know, people were looking into things, but they never really saw anything on this magnitude. And I think 9-11 represents, 
an awakening uh, for many, many people into just the world's lies, that there definitely are deceptions, that the government you know, does cover up, does uh, hide things. Um, and while sometimes we don't know 100% what the true story is, we definitely know what it's not and what the official narrative says. So maybe, Joe, you could maybe talk a little bit, you know, with your interest. Obviously, you'll be bringing this up. Uh, you know, you'll have this at your conference. But I thought maybe even with the new information, because um, uh, that's news to me, and I'd like to hear more about, uh, you know, the findings that they're, they're seeing um, with the 9-11. Oh, absolutely. It's a fascinating um, topic and one that when you start learning all, who all the players are involved, um, you know, anger can kind of come up because it's, it's so in your face. It's um, kind of obvious once you, once you know what to look for. But yeah, you know, on the morning of September 11th, uh, you know, 2001, I was going about my morning, you know, on the West Coast, obviously it was pretty early. And, um, you know, the news came through that uh, some plane or a plane had hit the building and, and uh, I ran over to my mom's house, which was pretty close. And I got there just in time to see the second plane hit and I tell you I, I had I, a, a, a series of emotions and one was grief you know a deep deep sadness I, I, I wept followed immediately by anger and I wanted revenge and uh, I, I, people that did this needed to pay and they needed to pay now and I can look back now and go wow that's exactly the perpetrators of this event wanted us to feel. I played right into it. We all, a lot of us did. We looked at it. Now, some people will look at it and say, I knew it was fake right when I saw it, but I was not one of them. I bought it and I was deeply grieved, followed by anger. And if I was young enough at that time, I would have signed up because, you know, we needed to pay. So there's those emotions on the one end of the scale. Um, and because of a, that was, that was our Pearl Harbor. So it, it, we knew this was going to be life changing, history changing from the moment that this occurred. Then those buildings fell and, you know, it was just icons were gone in seconds. And um, so as the, you know, the years went on, uh, I carried that around with me until I started to learn about other things that the government had done. Um, you know, things like Ruby Ridge and Waco. There's, you know, a lot of things that are are that our government did in those situations to instigate retaliatory things. And once you start learning that, and then you start looking at um, things like Flight 800. I don't know if you remember, you guys remember Flight 800. It was a flight out of um, LaGuardia or JFK on its way to Paris, France. A bunch of school kids on it, and moments after um, taking off, it, it blew up. And mm, yes. it was mm -hmm. a big investigation, and some people said they saw what appeared to be rockets trailing up to it. And, you know, nothing ever really came of it. But that was another thing that got me to start looking at the trail. And guys like Jack Cahill, if you know, remember him, uh, put out lots of documentaries that started to lead to this connection with uh, Middle East terrorism and, and uh, people in our own country and government that were involved. And that was the first time that I heard that 9-11 may not have been what what we thought it was, and that blew my mind. It was pretty obvious. I saw planes fly into buildings, and, and they found, you know, uh, passports and you know, all these things that you just don't think about at the time. And uh, so here we are you know, all these years later, and it's still in the forefront. You know, it's kind of died down, and there's a lot of people that look at 9-11 that if you question 9-11, you are not a patriot, you're not American, you know, what kind of person are you that could even put forth the, the notion that people could do these things? And I like how Matt Long puts it. You know, there's a, there's a mindset that it's a good versus evil. There is good versus evil out there, and it's not even a little bad. It's terribly bad. And um, yeah. so I did a lot of research into 9-11, the buildings, and uh, I got fascinated with um, controlled demolition being – you know, four hours away from Las Vegas, and there was a period of time where there was buildings being demolished all the time. So I watched them on the internet, and then I went back and looked at the, the those two buildings coming down. Mind you, at this time I only knew about two buildings. Two buildings came down. Like, wow, that looks incredibly like a controlled demolition. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
didn't know enough about what all that meant yet. It wouldn't be till years later of a lot of study, a lot of education on um, engineering and architectural design and how particularly those buildings were designed. And um, then I found architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth, pilots for 9-11 Truth, um, all these different organizations. And that, that's where my education just went through the roof with uh, what I believe to be very um, solid evidence disproving the official story. So, you know, here it is in 2019 now, and um, the grand jury and uh, or in the southern, southeastern district, I believe, of Manhattan, there's a, a grand jury being convened. It started towards the end of the year, and uh, the architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth have been put for years. They've been doing this. But finally, they're taking a look at 57 pieces of evidence um, that point to controlled demolition, explosives being... Uh, the presence of explosives because if you remember when those buildings fell almost immediately they started trucking off all the debris to a spot um just off the uh the port there and yeah, yeah and then they shipped it off didn't they then they shipped it off to china or to something china. that yeah. is that's treasonous that's a treasonous act in and of itself mm-hmm. from an investigative um criminal investigative standpoint that's treasonous when it just People should have gone to prison for just that, not even to mention if there was, if there was any explosives in, the, in that building, doesn't mean planes didn't hit the building, but it means that somebody went in at a, ahead of time, and it would have taken weeks, probably months, to set the appropriate charges to bring it down as it did, Sure. and you just don't get into a building like the World Trade Center's unnoticed and so you start wondering wait a minute there if explosives were there that means it was premeditated it's a different situation now whether the planes hit or not irrelevant somebody else was way ahead of the planes and put explosives in these buildings and then you start sure. doing your investigation and who was in charge of security and and it's the same company that uh, is actually marvin bush which is um president bush's cousin was in charge Correct. of the security at yep. the World Trade Center complex and Dulles and Newark for the TSA. Right. So, wow. But, uh, you know, at well, this yeah. conference, a question, everything, you know, we could have five different stages talking just about 9 11. Sure. And, uh, what, we're, what we've chose to focus on with Dan Noel is uh, he's going to give an incredible and compelling talk strictly about the official story about World Trade Center 7, because remember that one wasn't hit by any planes, and it was reported yeah. by sporadic fires, but yet it yeah. fell at 5 p.m. Yeah, building, yeah, building 7 is one that even some of the biggest skeptics that I've run into, even some close friends that are like, you're crazy, of course it was terrorist, you know, the official report. But when I brought up Building 7, and I mean, a couple of them were in construction, they understand how things work. They're like, yeah, something's up with Building 7. So I think even for the biggest <laughs> skeptic, um, they can see that there's some big problems with Building 7, you know, huge problems. Because, I mean, I say this all the time, and I'll be bringing this up at Question Everything Conference, because when, you know, I'm getting into, you know, scientism, and while I'm focusing mainly around, you know, how they've used uh, cosmology and they've used evolution and all these, you know, the origin stories, what, what I find fascinating is scientism is the validator of all things. So science comes on board and they validate anything from, you know, the idea that there's more than two sexes to the fact that 9-11, the way that it was told was true because what happened? You know, you had all these science scientists that came forward and did all this, you know, information and that's what secured it in most people's minds. It was the scientists. So I find that, uh, you know, scientism is, is such a perfect vehicle to validate anything they want, whether it's, uh, you know, chemtrails aren't real because scientists prove so or climate change. So I'm, I'm really fascinated with that angle of it because, again, the authorities in this world are the ones that come down and they make it valid for most people. So I know for me with 9-11, you know, and, and most people, when you first start looking into it, you're like, whoa, like just the idea of what you just said, Joe, which is 100% spot on. The fact that they would have had months, weeks, whatever, to rig the buildings. I mean, if you understand how sinister and how awful and evil that is and how many people must be involved, but we hear this time and time again, too many people have to be involved. How, 
how could how could they lie? You know, we'll be getting into this, you know, down the road here when we talk about different topics, because I hear it all the time. It's like, no, the lie is too big. Too many people would have to be involved. But 9-11 is case in point that many people, many different divisions would have to be involved to pull off that that type of coordination. Um, so let's go over to Nate for a bit, because I know, Nate, this might be going back. I'm not sure where you're at. I haven't really talked to you, you know, back uh, as far as where you were at. But, yeah. just, you know, as a pastor, being you know involved with what you're doing, when 9-11 came about, you know, what was your thoughts, whether whether you could see uh, the lies or not at that point? I'm just kind of curious how you viewed what happened in the events of September 11th. Yeah, well, I have a I have a crazy story to tell you. OK, so uh, before I tell you what my opinion of, of it was, I had uh, just quit the police in Anchorage, Alaska and decided to go back into ministry, uh, you know, and ended up going to um, Midland, Michigan, as a youth and family minister for for an interview. Right. So we're down in Michigan. We're interviewing for this ministry position we had uh flown down all the way from anchorage alaska okay so we're we might as well be as far away as you could get you know we're four hours uh time difference and all that so anyway we were with one of the elders who was showing us around the town and uh he was showing us some different schools and he used to be a teacher at, at a school there for like 30 years so he took us to the local junior high and he's given us the tour you know and and uh, all of a sudden we walk past the library and he's like, what's going on in there? Well, they're, you know, old school, you know, they used to have like TVs, uh, like the old square box TVs, uh, you know, up on a, up on a little deal there hanging down from the ceiling, like a media, media thing. And uh, he saw a bunch of teachers standing looking at a TV and he's like, well, this is odd. Let's go check it out. So we go in there and he's like, what's up? And, and of course, people were just kind of sitting there almost like they didn't hear him say, you know anything because they were kind of stunned and then one person said a plane just hit the world trade center uh and while we're standing there we see then all of a sudden the second plane hits so you know it that pretty much ended our nice little tour i mean we were all just kind of in shock and and he he was wanting to get home uh to his wife and to get us to a safe place because we didn't know what was going on you know so that was an awkward drive back to the hotel. So here we are in this interview. 9-11 happens. All the flights are grounded. You know, we'd already been there like five, four or five days, and we were supposed to head back, like I think uh, the next day or something. We ended up being down at this interview for like nine or ten days. <laughs> so they got a really good look at us, and we got a really good look at them. And uh, check this out, man. This This was like a little test of faith and probably a little test of, you know, potential prejudice, but we were back in the uh, the airport in Detroit, and we were supposed to fly back to Alaska finally after they opened the flights, and uh, we were on, we were booked on an American Airlines flight, so, you know, talk about, like, stress, you know, yeah. and uh, we okay. were, we were, we were sitting in a Burger King, you know, one of those little tiny Burger Kings, grabbing a quick bite before we'd fly, flow back, and uh, there was an American Airlines pilot who looked like he might have been like Middle Eastern, you know, he was like 28, 30 years old, something like that. And my wife and I felt felt bad for the guy because everybody in the restaurant was like looking at him, you know, because he's got this American Airlines, you know, deal on. And, and uh, anyway, we just said a little prayer. We got on the plane and we got home okay. But uh, honestly, I was one of those. Hey, Robbie, it's Joe. Can you still hear? I'm here. Did we lose Nate? I think we might have lost him. Hmm. Okay. Well, I guess we lost Nate. Uh, he was uh, telling us a fascinating story, but maybe we'll move Great over to, uh, to Joe. But yeah. Oh, amazing. So maybe we'll get him back here in a little bit. But yeah, I, I didn't know if it was uh, just the, the sound that went off or what, but uh, I guess we've lost him. So anyways, um, hopefully he'll come back here in just a few. He can reconnect. Uh, maybe I'll just send him a tech and stuff but uh, you know what he's saying is uh, pretty you know intriguing so i definitely want to hear the rest of the story but 9-11 joe honestly was was huge for so many people and i think at that point they kind of started climbing you know up that spectrum as far as you know how far would they go you know what would they look into you know what was off bounds and i know we're going to be talking about different you know topics for many listeners you know that might be even too far out there but uh, you know 9-11 for most people it was really hard to imagine that uh, you know the government 
whether being you know explicitly involved or just basically not saying anything. I mean, there's many, many theories from plans to no plans. Um, actually, I'm just kind of curious, where, where do you stand? Because, you know, from getting into conspiratorial type mindsets, I mean, there's a lot of different views out there. Uh, do you believe there were planes involved at all? You know, I, that is so hard. And, and I, I like how Dan approaches it because I asked him about that as well. And he says, when you, when you get, especially when you're, when you're trying to talk with somebody about it that might have a closed mind, they, when you get into those things and say like, you know, there weren't even any planes. Now it's just, it's so far outside their box of comprehension that you've lost them. And I, and I, I usually, I'll answer your question. I just, we come back to the thing that is, is undeniable, which is World Trade Center 7. That just, we've got to bring it back to that, especially for a new person that is trying to understand why we would think that, um, you know, somebody would be involved other than the terrorist that they named. You, you start at World Trade Center 7 and find out that that's the first domino to fall. And if you wrap your head around that one, then there's a really good opportunity to look at, okay, now let's look at the other buildings. But I have a problem, Robbie, with two, two of the planes. Now, to me, I believe planes probably hit um, the World Trade Centers, uh, the two buildings there. Um, and I think what we see is as far as the limited damage in, but here's the problem. There's not enough um, debris you know, there, there should have been a lot of debris down at the bottom, but then again, it probably got buried when the buildings collapsed. So I think that one, it has to be a scratch. Um, the hole in the building is what would is what I would expect um, a plane of basically aluminum. Yes, you have big engines, so there's, a con you know, there's, there's some conflict there. But those things would have just been shredded into nothing because the World Trade Centers had a steel exterior. So it would just would have shredded anything that hit it. But then you look at the Pentagon and uh, the Pennsylvania field, and I don't believe there were planes that hit those things. I, I don't think that there was anything that, that uh, actually crashed in the Pennsylvania field. I think that was a series of maybe one or two um, aerial-launched missiles that you know hit the ground and created that pit that was there. I mean, there was some debris, but there... There's so many plane crashes throughout history, just in our lifetime, that you know they're going all different speeds and, and altitudes falling from the sky. There's always debris. There's always luggage. There's chairs. There's bodies, as horrible as that is to say. And there was none of that in Pennsylvania. And as far as I'm aware, there was none of that in the in the in the in the Pentagon. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, we yeah, saw I mean, there's no fuselage. I mean, there's no fuselage. I mean, like, if you actually start looking at the wreckage, I mean, in Pennsylvania, there was just like a hole in the ground. You know, you start looking at the Pentagon, it's just you basically get, a hole. Got, I mean, you, you know, got me back? Oh, yeah. good. Well, you're back. Good. Awesome. We did yeah, hear the end of that story. Yeah, we'll, we'll, think, we'll get you to continue the uh, end of the story. Well, I there, think the uh, storm Nate. took out my internet, so I'm on Well, my there phone. you go. Yeah. There you go. See. That's how bad it is. That's how bad it is in Ohio right now. That's how bad it is. Well, Joe's sitting in sunny. Well, he sits in sunny California, <laughs> all nice and uh, you know relaxed. It's like we're getting hit with oh, snowstorms dude. here in Canada. And, oh my and, goodness, uh, I feel bad. I'm sorry. Come on out and stay with me, guys. Come on. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, we're coming out. We're coming out. We'll, we'll be there. We'll, we'll be there in a month. We're coming out. Both of us. So actually, Nate, Nate's going to be my my roomie for the for the week. Nice. The weekend. It's yeah, gonna that's going to be fun. Oh gosh, it's going to be a great time, guys. Yeah, but anyways, uh, before we get back to, to Nate kind of telling his story, uh, we were just kind of talking about, uh, you know, whether people believe there were planes or no planes. Uh -huh. and the reality is this. The, the reality is this, that when you start looking at, uh, let's just say the Pentagon, there, there was no plane that actually hit the Pentagon. There's no wings. There's no fuselage. I mean, there's no luggage. There's no blood. There's no people. Nothing. It just goes in into a little hole, right? And so we're led to believe that, like, uh, you know, an airline uh, flight went through there. Not to mention that they hidden all the... Um, the security footage i mean there's 26 something i think 26 cameras that were um you know shooting that and uh, you know nothing's released just kind of this still cam but anyways like i said there's so many different theories but we at least while we don't know 100 percent what the truth is we definitely know what it's not so let's go back to nate nate continue on your story i'm not sure exactly um, how much you heard when he got cut off yeah, man. or the uh, storm wiped out his internet yeah i'm not sure where i left off exactly but basically what i was saying was uh, you know, after we flew back from this uh, nine-day interview in Michigan due to 9-11, uh, 
Um, you know, I was one of those who felt that the that the uh, narrative was, you know, the truth. And it wasn't until uh, probably two, three years ago, which was, ju- you know, just before I came into Flat Earth, um, I was doing some studying, you know, with the uh, Kennedy assassination and then uh, ended up into 9-11 and the moon landing. So I actually had kind of begun to be wary of government and things like that. And I changed my mind on the whole 9-11 situation. And as I said earlier, what really got me was uh, what appeared, you know, videos of what appeared to be, you know, detonations floor by floor almost. And uh, and then the fact that Building 7 goes down, it looks like a demolition. And some of the TV news people had announced it before it even happened. So... <laughs> I was like, so let me get let me get this straight. So basically, we got Pastor Nate going from the the upper echelon of conspiracy theories and working his way backwards, while most people (laughs) started off with kind of the minor ones like JFK and moved upwards. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, yeah, man. Unbelievable. (laughs) That's really what it takes, right? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, flat Earth was like you know pretty late in the game for me. (laughs) No, well, for sure. But like I said, it's interesting. Like I, I tell people all the time that. Flat Earth pretty much is the umbrella lie. And if you understand what the umbrella is, all the other conspiracies or other the untruths fit in, you know, underneath that umbrella, right? So it's yeah. very, very e- easy for you to go downwards. It's tougher for people to go up from JFK to 9-11, right? Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people that don't believe the official report of, of JFK, but they still believe the official report of 9-11, right? So it's almost yeah. like, where are you on that conspiracy scale? Because like I say, everyone has a conspiratorial side inside them or a skeptical side where they're kind of like, well, something doesn't add up there. It's just the question of how you know high do you want to go? So the nice thing with you, you've already got to the upper echelon. I mean, there's nothing yeah. higher than flat earth. I mean, I say this all the time. Yeah. Um, so I know like Joe and I, we probably went, you know, the, the other way that most people progress, but uh, let's, let's kick it back to, to Joe real quick. Uh, Joe, um, for you after 9-11, what was kind of one of the major uh, things that you started looking into once you kind of exhausted yourself with, you know, really looking to 9-11. Because for me, I went on marathons. I mean, I watched like, uh, what was it, The Loose Change. And I mean, I just couldn't get enough documentaries. I had to know every single angle. But once I had exhausted myself with 9-11, for me, I started moving into the monetary system and uh, the elite. But I'm curious with you, what was kind of where you went after 9-11? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I actually started with uh, the whole uh, creature of Jekyll Isle thing back in 2003. So I was already questioning the government as far as those those kinds of things. But yeah, after 9/11, um, gosh, let me think. I think I just I think I just sunk back into life. Um, I had a lot of other things going on. We ended up moving to Arizona. Then eventually my my uh, marriage fell apart. So I, I was I had a lot of other distractions that kept me out of that frame of mind for a long time but you know during during that th- those times there were just a, a, so many different things but i did become um aware of there was some well okay the moon landing probably would have been the one that i came back to after 9 11. i'd already been convinced about the moon landing prior to 9 11. um but i came back to it because there was so much more um i guess you would say better technology that was being able to analyze the stuff that was there so i came back to um you know the movie capricorn one watched it again um i think i got sidetracked on ancient aliens of all things um i think i i I delved into that (laughs) for a long time giants you know nephilim and then it led me to antarctica which was the last stop before flat earth which is which was antarctica and uh i didn't know why i was researching antarctica you know, heads of state were going to Antarctica, and I just didn't know what was about that. But being that I was typing in Antarctica and looking at all that stuff, you know, obviously it was inevitable. I was going to get a little, hey, you might like this video. <laughs> and it was uh, it was a slow process for, for the, you know, the, the flat earth part of it. But yeah, I, I think after 9-11, um, it was I went back to the moon landing and... I've always been fascinated. Well, I don't know if you guys know this. I was born on July 18th, 1969, two days mm. before we landed on the moon. So mm. when I was a little kid, I wanted my name changed to Neil Armstrong Garcia. Like Rob Skiva said, you know, I, I was a NASA fanboy. Wait, 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 wait. You, did you say you were born, born in 69? 
July 18th, 1969. Yeah. Wow. I don't feel so old anymore. Nathan, Nathan, I've always been the old one because Nate's <laughs> actually younger than I am, but now we've got someone older than both of us. We got to respect yeah. our elders. Continue. Yeah. Continue. I'm an oldie, but a goodie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm just teasing. Anyway, Joe, keep, continue on. Yeah, and my identity tied to that event, you know, uh, birthdays and, you know, just, that was just, everything was, was tied to this event. Um, and then, uh, you know, it, probably after 9-11 too, um, I think it was that movie, Room 237. So it might have been, you know, about quite a few years after that. But Room 237 mm-hmm. came out certainly after the 9-11 awakening. And then that, I think that's the movie that got me back into going, wait a minute. And that's the thing. They've been telling us all the time, this whole time in movies and entertainment, that the moon landings were fake. And we just couldn't see it. And and, and also about the world we live in with, you know, the Truman Show and so many TV shows and they're out there just telling us and they're putting it in our face. And uh, but we just couldn't see it. So, yeah, it was it was really the moon landing is what I went back to ancient aliens, Antarctica. And then I finally found my way to the mother of all, which is the God created flat earth. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, you brought up two things there, the moon landing in Antarctica and I you know, say that uh, those two are really important or crucial uh, to look into, especially the moon landing, because, you know, if hypothetically they didn't go to the moon, then the questions are, are, you know, how far can they go and why would they lie? And I bring this up, you know, not just in my documentary films, but also when I'm, you know, engaging with people, because that really is the pinnacle. That's really um, where you can start looking into a lot of different things if you, you know, start questioning the moon landing. Come name up like 9-11 i mean all the stuff that we're going to be discussing here on the show if you still believe in the official report of 9-11 well all this stuff must be just seem crazy um you know to you and that's the whole point is you need to almost go back and you need to really start you know looking at these things like 9-11 um because again governments do lie they do cover up there is this been going on for a very long time right up to the moon landing but uh, you know how did you how did you start coming into the moon landing uh, research, because I'm pretty sure, Nate, you can comment on this as well, um, but I'm sure it came to you coming to biblical cosmology, looking into the absurdities of the moon landing. But Joe, like for you, how did you stumble across this? Because this was kind of part of your journey as well. Yeah, uh, being that I just, um, I always was fascinated with the moon. Uh, if No matter what I was doing in my, in my life, um, if, if it was a full moon out, I would be distracted and I would always be just just drawn to it and just fascinated with it. And like, what is it about this thing? And, um, you know, did we go? And I, and I started finding, um, videos where people were saying there's structures on the moon, you know? So I started looking at that. Oh my gosh, you know, there, there's structures on the moon. And then the stories that, you know, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, uh, saw aliens parked on the side of the crater, watching them while they're up there. I'm like, Oh my gosh, maybe that's why we didn't go back. So there was a conspiracy as to why we didn't go back. And that's what pulled me in. Why didn't we go back? A lot of different theories. There's structures up there. Oh, there's aliens up there that we're not, you know, they don't want us up there. Ooh, that, that makes a lot of sense. I think a movie came out about that same storyline, uh, that there were aliens up there or something. So I, it just was always fresh in my mind. But the structures on the moon um, got me to start looking um, – at other videos, and it, it came across um, Crow 777, right? His, uh, mm-hmm. his, uh, the, the moon refresh, the moon waves thing. That, that mm-hmm. was kind of the newest thing over the last couple of years um, that just got me looking at it. Like, Wait a minute, is the moon not even really a thing? What is it? Is it a hologram? And then just crazy ideas. I, I went to all these different extremes to try and explain this world that, that I was living in when it was always right in front of me if I had just opened up the word and took God's word as truth. It tells mm-hmm. us exactly what kind of world we're living in. Sure. So, sure. Yeah. That's what's so fascinating about all of this is how many people are starting to wake up to the truth of the true creation, the true creator. Um, and, you know, because like 9-11, I don't really remember that time where people were like rushing out and picking up King James Bibles and seeing what the Bible had to say about 9-11. But when it came to the investigation uh, of NASA and science and, and seeing all these lies, it didn't matter who you were, people were fascinated with finding out what the Word of God had to say, what the Bible had to say. So I'm always incredibly uh, excited and intrigued just the fact that so many people 
are waking up and they are taking an interest in the Bible. Like I say, anything that draws people to the Bible is not a bad thing at all. I mean, this is something that it's pretty amazing. And so many people are involved in this investigation, whether they believe in the Bible or not. That is what's so striking. It's like we're all on the same side right now fighting against a common enemy because it's not just that they lie and cover up, you know, the truth about 9-11. They're lying to us about our reality. They're lying to us about what we see in the sky. That's how big this deception goes, everyone that's listening. You might, you know, think about a lot of things. And they lied about this, lied about that. Stop for a second and think. What if they've lied about your entire reality since the day that you woke up, then you were born and you entered the school system, there was that globe, there was that solar system mobile over your crib. This deception, this indoctrination is deep. Uh, and sometimes it's deep for, it's too deep for many people. And that's fine. That's why it's amazing, you know, to have a conference the way that Joe's putting together with question everything and saying, basically, let's question everything. Nothing is off the table. What is wrong with just having these questions? And we're talking about 9-11, which I'm sure many people listening in already are on board, knowing that there's some serious problems with the official report. But as we move, you know, further into other conspiracies and other uh, lies, like, for example, the moon landing, it gets harder to digest because, again, well, wait a minute, would other countries expose them? What about Russia? You know, what do you say when you hear that, you know, Nate? Um, you know, because I'm sure a lot of people that you run into uh, now, you know, with what you're being very vocal on, the fact that they lied to us about even the shape of the earth, the, the cosmos, and I'm sure that you do have people that, uh, you know, aren't on board. Do you get uh, some opposition when it comes to the craziness of not believing that they landed on the moon in the 1960s? Yeah, I mean, there, there's, you know, a strong reaction from people, uh, even believers. And, of course, after the church fired me, uh, you know, back in September, you know, I was getting messages from people like, you know, you don't believe this and you don't believe that. And, you know, they just they the word that they like to use was crazy, you know, or paranoid. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, it's interesting. I wonder how many of those folks uh, have been following my YouTube channel and, and watching videos. And I'm sure some of them are down the rabbit hole. Uh, they may not have made it public yet. But uh, but, yeah, I mean, you get a different reaction, um, you know, and then, of course, for, you know, for there's there's all kinds of different folks that you'll run into, like people who have served in the military or for instance, uh, my wife has a, has a good friend uh, that used to go to church here in the area with us where I was ministering. And then uh, her husband's in the military and, and they've been out for a few years, but she was back in town for the holidays and uh, called my wife up and said, Hey, yeah, let's do lunch. And she had, uh, she knew that I had been fired and she was very upset about it, uh, but she didn't know all the details. So my wife spent some time talking with her and they started talking about different things. And then she's like, oh, so so do you believe in flat earth? And she was like, yes, we do. And the funny thing is, is this lady who's a good friend of my wife's, she uh, used to work for the CIA. And uh, I don't know what she did because she would never tell us. <laughs> so it must have been something important. Hmm. But, any, you know, and her husband's, uh, you know, um, been in the military for uh, I think he he does something for one of the generals or something. So he's like an aide or some kind of a high level guy. But anyway, she was, uh, she was a true friend of my wife because even though at first she was kind of like, wow, she said, you know what? She says, you guys are both intelligent people. You both have master's degrees. She says, Nate has always uh, taught the truth. And she says, you know what? Because I respect you, I'm going to check into this. And uh, that was a really great moment for my wife because, you know, we lost so many quote unquote friends. Uh, this is one of her only remaining close friends. And she was concerned mm -hmm. about how she would react. Uh, but I tell you what, I really appreciate this, this lady because she was uh, more open minded than most. And she uh, has done a lot of Bible research. So I think she's the type of person that's going to start digging. And I would not be surprised if my wife gets a call back soon. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. What, what, what about you, Joe? Anyone uh, that kind of looks at you a little crazy when it comes to the moon landing? Or how do you respond? Um, you know, my, my dad, seriously, my dad's probably one of them. My brother, um, let's see, a, a really one particular guy at church. And I was telling you, you know, last yesterday when we, when we talked that 
um, I involved at church, play drums and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. last night we, we were at church and every week I get more and more people coming around, sitting around me, asking questions about the shape of the earth. You know, uh, it'll be from anywhere. From, hey, do you think do you, are you a flat earther? Really? Why do you think that? You know, and <laughs> it's interesting. It's very clear to me who reads their Bible and who doesn't. So because the people that read their Bible may not necessarily agree with you that about the flat earth, but they know the Bible verses I'm talking about. So they just haven't made that connection like, whoa, this is real. Um, but there, I had a great conversation where um, I talked to a guy today. He says, look, I sat down just to you know, eat dessert or whatever, and I was listening to you. And you, you know, I don't know if I believe all this stuff, but you said one thing that I could not stop thinking about. And that's how can you have, have a negative pressurized you know, um, vacuum of space next to a pressurized atmosphere without a barrier between them. And mm-hmm. he says, I couldn't get over that. I couldn't get over that. And for another person, it's, it's, it's the simple fact that our maps and um, the globe model, the globe itself, um, hasn't changed since before we had the ability to get up high enough to see what this place looked like. True. And now we went up into space high enough to see, you know, you would think there'd be a little bit of correction. I mean, come on, pretend a little bit. You know, pr- they, there was no correction to maps. You know, hey, we were pretty close, but here's what it looks like based on our, uh, you know, being up in space to see how high it is and what it looks like now. So for some people, it's as simple as that, that common sense. Well, and, that, and that's what I was going to transition to. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about the moon landing right now. I'm not jumping ahead to, to they've lied to us about the Earth. What I'm, I'm trying to illustrate is that, you know, moon landing is a great first topic before you even get into the shape of the Earth. Because getting mm-hmm. into the lied to us about the Earth is just so out there, even for me. And I mean, I was willing to look at anything. I mean, I'd, I'd look at lizard people run the Earth. And I thought I it was crazy. That. So, so yeah. my, my point was, and, and, you know, we've been having a great talk. It's gone so fast. I want to make sure, Joe, that you come into the second hour because we have a lot more to discuss. We've just basically talked about 9-11 and now we're at the moon landing. Um, but yeah. each of you, you know, before we go to the, uh, the break here, uh, what would you say is the top reason that you use? If you're going to say, here's the one reason that they didn't go to the moon, what would you say, Nate, what would you say to, to people? Well, just, uh, you know, some of the stuff that's come out of NASA's own mouth, you know, I mean, you got, I mean, Don Pettit is just cliche now in the truth or, you know, movement, uh, or excuse me, community, (laughs) but, you know, just to say, Hey, you know, we don't have the technology and then they lost all the telemetry data. And it's just like, really? I mean, how do you Mm -hmm. lose something like that? You're talking about volumes and you know, talking about real after real after real. So honestly, it it was more, uh, NASA's own blunders, you know, Mm -hmm. that can, that really convinced me. I mean, that sealed the deal, but then once, but then once I did, uh, you know, become a flat earther and I was looking in Genesis again, then I was like, Hey, the moon is a light. You know, it's not terra firma. Yeah, I mean, Genesis is very clear on that, and that's what's startling with all the the research that's going on. I mean, this is the conclusion that people are coming to. What about you, Joe? Uh, What would would you say is kind of that one thing that you would tell people, you know, why you're skeptical that they didn't go to the moon? Yeah, um, again, it comes back to what NASA said and the scientists. You know, there is the Van Allen radiation belt and the extreme, you know, and how we can't go through it now. They, 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 They mess themselves up by their... They're thinking they're so smart. They say we got to build this new Orion spacecraft with so much protection from the from the Van Allen radiation belt. And then you look at what we went through the Van Allen radiation belt back in the 60s and 70s. You're like what? It doesn't make sense. It's it's silliness. And I think people that are are at a certain place where they can at least analyze um, logically and some with common sense approaches to things can look at the stories and go something doesn't add up and then you tell them and not, not a lot not, not a lot of people know about the telemetry data being lost and how they lost sure. it and the greatest feat of, of humankind and they yeah, overrode it or lost it and destroyed the equipment to play it back on you know we know the whole thing yeah and I, like, I mean, I'm not waking crazy. up a lot that's waking up a lot of people and what i used to say even before flat earth because i i mean that's kind of the story on you know when i met my wife it's kind of a funny story which I'll share, you know, later, but, uh, you know, we both didn't believe in the moon landing, but, you know, I said to so many people, I'm like, listen, we've never been back. Right. And everyone would be, Oh, we don't need to, we've already been there. And, you know, it's just unbelievable to me, but this 
really comes down to if they didn't land on the moon, wow, why would they lie? And that's what we're going to go to in the second hour, because I think it's really important to start, you know, really looking into it for people that are maybe skeptical. They're on the fence. Take that journey and say, well, wait a minute. OK, I'll go with you guys. If they didn't go to the moon and they can't go to the moon, why would the government, why would the agencies, why have they gone for this long trying to teach us that? And that's what we're going to get into, because it gets pretty profound when you start understanding all the implications and everything that is involved when you do, you know, do one of the greatest mass deceptions ever. I mean, we we're talking about 9-11. That was big, but nothing, nothing is bigger than the moon landing deception. Uh, and you'll realize why they had to do something to that magnitude when you're going to convince the world that they're on a spinning ball flying through space and you're going to give them that shot. Um, you know, it's got to be a pretty big deception. And we're going to see that with NASA and SpaceX and Virgin Galactic and all these space agencies, all the different countries, it's this big. All the countries are involved because it's not merely men that run this deception. It's the spiritual force behind it that's been masterminding it from a very long time. So we're going to catch you on the second hour. We're going to the break now. Thank you so much. And Joe, stay tuned and stick around. We're going to talk about a lot more with Question Everything 2019 coming up in your Belinda. February 22nd and 23rd. The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host. Welcome back to Hour 2 of Celebrate Truth Radio. I'm your host, Robbie Davidson. Got my awesome co-host, Pastor Nate Wolf. And we've been talking to Joe Garcia in this program. And uh, for people that are just joining us, maybe, Joe, you could mention a little bit about the conference that you've organized and that's going to be happening next month in California. For sure. Thanks again, Robbie, for having me on. And Nate, always great to chat with you guys. So, yeah, the Question Everything Conference, February 22nd and 23rd, Yorba Linda, California, which is central Orange County, very close to uh, like places like Disneyland, very central to a lot of different airports, a lot of great amenities in the area. But all the information you can find is at QE2019.com. And uh, for listeners of this show, Robbie, um, there is a uh, promo code that they can save 25% off their, their tickets until January 23rd. And that's FE2018, 2018, FE2018. And you get 25% off your, your ticket to the um, conference, the two-day conference, 25% off until January 23rd. So that's the particulars, QE2019.com. But we're getting excited, Robbie. It's, uh, we're a little more than 30 days away, and uh, things are coming together, and the ticket sales are coming in. And, you know, it's fun to talk to you guys about, you know, you're planning on coming out. and Things that are going to be going on, not just you know, what what the guests are going to going to experience um, during the conference, which is going to be remarkable. It's going to be different. It's going to be um, an experience. So we can take you know I've been inviting people that have, that you know from church and different walks of life that may not buy into the, all this conspiracy stuff. They may buy into one of of the topics that we're talking to, but you know not all of them. And we're going to take them on this journey. Um, you know, starting off in a very not you know common ground place, you start working through you know the science, the the pharmaceuticals, um, the governments, and then the cosmology. I mean, we're going to ramp it up and slowly spoon feed them over this time um, with overwhelming information and evidence and truth and proofs that uh, what we've already come to the conclusion that you know we're we're being lied to. And I think right before the break, we were talking about what is the reason why there's all this going on. And, and you know, when you come to the Question Everything Conference, you're going to have a lot of questions answered. But hopefully you come away with the desire to ask more and go do the research on your own. Stop taking the word of other people. You know, if you're a, a person of faith, you know, let God's word be truth and every man be a liar. But prove mm -hmm. these things for yourself so you know that when you stand with authority and somebody's asking you, why do you believe these things? This is why I mm -hmm. tested these things. I did these experiments and uh, I read the word. And I believe the word of God. 
all these things. So I'm fired up. I get fired up when you start talking to me about this stuff because I think there's going to be an incredible experience for all of us involved, you know? Yeah, that's, that's, Amen, that's awesome. Yeah, totally awesome. I mean, for the people that are just tuning in now, in the first hour, we were getting into some of the topics uh, that are going to be brought up at the conference, uh, such as 9-11 and we were talking a bit about the moon landing. And in the second hour, I wanted to start getting into, you know, scientism and, and flat earth and, and getting into biblical cosmology, just because I think that's kind of the heart of where, you know, myself and even Nate um, are. But, uh, you know, maybe you could kind of explain to everyone how it came, you know, you finding my information. Because when you reached out and asked if, uh, you know, I'd be a speaker, which, by the way, thank you you so much it's a real honor to be part of the very first question everything conference um maybe just maybe you could maybe uh, explain how you came across the the work that i do uh, on youtube and uh, uh with my various films and and uh, etc absolutely yeah and uh, you know honored to have both of you guys involved in this in this first ever question everything conference but you know um robbie when i um so the first time i ever saw anything about flat earth and you know i i, I dismissed it. it was youtube stuff i'm like that no but, 20, what was it, 17? How can anybody think like this? It's ridiculous. And brush it, brush it off. But, you know, I came back when it was, uh, you know, a little while later. Um, and it was a, it was either a mirrored video, but it said Celebrate Truth on it. That's all I remember. It Celebrate Truth on it. It was like a two and a half hour long video about uh, where, you know, this, this place that we live. And um, I watched it over and over again. And I couldn't believe what I was. Do you remember what video it was? Um, not off the top of my head. I probably could look through okay, my YouTube uh, feed and find it, but um, yeah, and it was just this uh, this two and a half hour long video, and a guy went through the whole thing. The whole it was almost like a flatter clues, but it was some other guy that was talking. But it, at the bottom, it said celebrate celebrate truth on it. And um, at the I think it was a sick day. I think I was sick that day or something. And the kids got home from school, my stepkids, and uh, here, check this out. They're their dad is a uh, satellite engineer, uh, designed satellites for Boeing up in El Segundo. And so they're, they're not only are they smart, intelligent kids, they have this, they have been brought up in the worldview that, you know, their dad builds satellites and they launch into space and he goes to, to different places to launch these things. So I had just asked them to sit down and watch this. I, I didn't even tell them what it was. I think I gave him cookies or something like that. You bribed him to step on them. <laughs> I didn't say one word. I didn't say one word to them. Just said, hey, check this out. And uh, they watched it. And uh, my stepson, the younger one, a 13-year-old, first thing he says, the earth is flat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, dude. And, and this, my stepdaughter was like, I don't know. It's interesting. And uh, that was it. So I, asked, I heard your name. I, I saw Celebrate Truth. And I started looking up some more of your stuff. So, and then I watched the, uh, the Scientism 1 and 2. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Because I, I think I'm a fairly smart person, intelligent. You know, I can look at something and, and analyze it. And like your, those videos just spoke obvious truths. And how did I miss it? Yeah. So when it came to putting on the conference, um, I think I reached out to Chris Bailey and you around the same time. And I'm driving home from work one day, and I get this call. I think it might have said Canada on the thing. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. And Robbie Davidson's calling me out of the blue, wanted to know how he could help. And uh, appreciate that. Love that, brother. That's just that's so awesome. And you've been integral in this whole process. Uh, my mentor to answer questions on, hey, what about this? What about that? You tell me, hey, have you thought about this? Or I would avoid doing that. And it's just been just so great. The community is great. And You've been a great um, representative of it to me, uh, from somebody that I was watching on YouTube and learning from, to now uh, building this friendship with and doing this conference together. So, really appreciate awesome. that. No, absolutely. It's it's, uh, it's an amazing uh, journey, and I'm excited to to be a part of it. And I appreciate everything that you're doing um, in in supporting and helping out. Uh, you know, more people finding out these truths. So I know that you can't recall the exact Celebrate Truth video that you watched, um, you know, coming across my information. But uh, do you remember the first video that you watched when it came to this topic, Flat Earth? Do you remember the one that first kind of made you sit back and go, wow? Or was, was it that one? It was it was that one. It, it, it started with. Uh, it was that you know, one. OK, first. that's that's pretty that's pretty intriguing because, I mean, we're going to move over to Pastor Nate, but I'm pretty sure Pastor Nate might have 
more of a similar story, but maybe you can um, tell uh, the listeners what what was the first video or information you came across where it started making you look into uh, this whole flat earth topic, uh, Pastor Nate? Yeah, man, uh, it was uh, interesting enough. It was the global lie by Celebrate Truth. Uh, you know, I as I've shared in some of my testimonies before, I was asked to uh, speak at a church up in Michigan. And by the way, me. by the way, I'm actually, yeah. by the way, I'm actually working on the Global I 2.0. I'm actually working oh, on sweet. the updated sweet. version and I'm putting it together the way I would have liked to do done it, like kind of like scientism exposed. Awesome. So back then it was kind of my first, you know, official kind of documentary, <laughs> but I have always wanted to really do a real good number on it. But anyways, continue on. Nice, nice. Well, it was good enough back then to, uh, grab me by the throat and uh, smack me around a little bit and get my brain juices flowing. You know, I was going to do this uh, study, well, lead this study, teach this deal on the flood and for this church about 50 minutes north of me. And I was pretty excited because the flood is a very interesting topic. You know, I'm kind of a history buff, but also being a Bible guy for over 20 years at that point. And uh, so I, I go up north and I do this uh, deal on the flood and it's so very well received. But right before I went up there, I decided, well, I got some extra time. Um, I'm going to check out some videos on the flood on YouTube. And I start watching a few videos and then all of a sudden the global eye pops up on the YouTube recommendations. I'm like, what? What is that? You know, like I had been thinking I had actually done a couple of lessons about Satan as a deceiver, deceiving the world. And of course I was, you know, looking at some spiritual things that, uh, you know, he was deceiving people with. And, and so this idea of deception was very interesting to me. So I'm like, okay, the global lie, I got to find out what's this global lie. And uh, at first, to be honest with you, the first minute or two, I was thinking, well, what if this is just a troll, you know, because there's so many trolls on YouTube, but it didn't take it didn't take like maybe another minute or so. And I'm like, wait a second, this is like, they're quoting scripture. Like, okay, uh, this is a real deal. This is a documentary, you know? And of yeah, course, it opens the up with Job. I mean, the, yeah, the, the actual yeah. film opens up with Job, but yeah, continue. Yeah. I mean, I, I, at first I was thinking, okay, you know, what is this? But, uh, as I went through it, I was just kind of glued and I was taking notes. You know, I actually had to go back. I I'd kind of backed the video up because I wanted to write down like every scripture, right? So I got done with the global lie and I was just kind of like sitting there. My kids hadn't uh, gotten back from school yet. My wife was at work. So I'm just kind of like in my living room, you know, uh, all kinds of things going through my mind. And I'm like, you know what, if this, if there's even a chance that this could be true, like I owe it to the word of God. I owe it to, you know, the father in heaven. I owe it to the people that I preach to and teach to every single week, I, I need to get to the bottom of this. Mm -hmm. And of course, after I click on the global eye, now I'm getting, you know, actual phrases in videos that are recommended that say something, something flat earth. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. Uh, so I end up clicking on a few and uh, I know within the first week or two, of course, I probably, I definitely hit on flat earth clues with Mark Sargent, uh, at least one or two ODD, you know, videos, uh, I think an Eric DeBay video and pretty soon, you know, I'm watching Rob Skiba and Dean Odell and all kinds of stuff. So it was just the floodgates were open, man. There was no, there was no holding back the flood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I know how that was. I, I think, um, I believe that all three of us uh, or married. I'm not sure how long it took each of you to bring it up with your wife, but it took me a couple of weeks and I was nervous. I don't know about you. What about you, Joe? How long did it take you? And, and have you told your wife? You know, what's awesome about that is uh, later on that day, she came home from work after me showing the, uh, the stepkids. She watched it. Like I said, I probably watched that four times. It was like the whole day event. it was called wow. the world's shocking secret, the full documentary. Oh, okay. So yep. Yep. Oh. Almost a year ago. Right? Yep. Almost a year uh, ago. I remember it. I remember it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, of course, um, also about my wife. And I sat down, and we'd already started reading the Bible together. And you know, once it became clear that you know it was biblical, she's like, oh, if it's in the Bible, then I believe it. And that was it. Sweet. She, nice. she believed it. Like, wait nice. a minute. That was my wife, too. That was my wife, too. 
amazing, right? They're just so incredible pace. Unbelievable, uh, unbelievable. I'm like shaking. I'm almost shaking my mind. Like, no, 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 you don't understand. I just said, I think the earth is flat. And she's like, yeah, if the Bible says it, I believe it. I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. I just said, like, I'm like, no, you can't accept it that easy, you know? But uh, God bless her, uh, her faith yeah, or just awesome. that conviction on standing on the word of God. And I think that was, you know, very humbling for me um, coming to this was, was like, wow, like, you know, for the longest time, like I really truly wasn't taking the Bible literal when it came to creation. I really wasn't standing on the word of God, you know. Um, so it was a humbling experience for me. But uh, what about you, Pastor Nate? Well, how did uh, that discussion come up when all of a sudden you figured out that, you know, <laughs> the earth, the earth is flat? Yeah. So, you know, it was uh, probably a week or so into this deal. You know, I often, uh, after work, you know, I would often with some free time, you know, maybe watch a Netflix movie or something like that, you know, um, or at least have something playing in the background while I'm doing some studying or whatever. And uh, my wife noticed that, you know, I looked a little more intense than usual. And uh, I'm watching, you know, all these videos on YouTube and she's like, what you got going on over there? Like, you know, is everything OK? You, know, you look kind of intense. And I'm like, I'm sitting there going, man, what am I supposed to say? Just like, oh, nothing. It's just flat earth, you know. So I said, well, I said, <laughs> I watched this video now to give you some some backstory. I have been a, a true seeker for many, many years. And so my wife was used to me about every six months I'd get into some topic. And I'd study it out, you know, and I had talked to her before when I jumped into the whole, you know, uh, the other conspiracy, you know, topics that we talked about last hour. Um, and so she was used to me kind of doing this, but this was like a whole new ball game, Right. So I told her and she's like, really? She's like, is that a thing? And I said, well, I think it is. You know, I said, I'm, I'm pretty I'm becoming pretty convinced of this. Now, she started watching some videos and doing, you know, and we started talking about it together and. And again, we talked about the Bible and she was on board pretty fast, man. I mean, mm. fast, faster than I was, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's a common uh, denominator between all of yeah. our wives. Well, they, they accepted it quicker than all of us. We were like, no, yeah. no, this can't be this, you know, like we're going through this like you know, inner <laughs> battle. Um, you know, I know I did, I did uh, personally. And uh, when she was just like, yeah, the Bible says it, it's true. It's like, no, yeah. no, no, you don't understand. Yeah, like yeah. they can't be that easy. But uh, wow, that that's uh, that's amazing. So so Joe, your wife just uh, was pretty much like the Bible says it, it's true. Yeah, and and again, like Nate, um, I had been just into so many different things. She called this my shiny new penny. Okay. Uh, we'll see how long it lasts, right? Sure, sure. And fad. we talked about yeah. it today on the way out to the meetup. Um, you know, could, would you have thought that we'd still? I mean, we not only were we putting on a conference, but that we're that we'd still be talking about this topic and it had yeah. it's launched us into such this other um you know depth into the into the word and she says you know actually no i didn't i didn't believe uh that we'd still be talking about this so it was <laughs> yeah. uh, i'm going on four years i mean i'm going on wow. four years and i'm sure most people when i came up with this they're like oh this is a fad or this is robbie's new thing but um i think because uh, when nate was uh, explaining before that you know respect had a big part to play in it. I mean, I know people even when I was working uh, in Christian radio that I still know today and they still, you know, aren't willing just to laugh this off. They're like, you know, we, we uh, respect Robbie in his research. And there's other areas, you know, throughout the years when I was working in Christian radio that uh, I had a lot of respect in my workplace. So even today, and I'm sure some people make, you know, some jokes and I even got some good friends that, you know, well, if we're at Starbucks, they'll be like, Hey, he's going to get a flat white, you know, jokes like that, just kind of fun, <laughs> you know, what, what, that aren't really derogatory. But uh, overall, I think that if you do have like that respect and people are like, well, wait a minute, you know, there's something here. And, you know, people have asked me questions and, um, you know, sometimes you just don't brush it off. But I know that, you know, many people listening don't really know who, you know, all three of us are whatsoever. So they're just hearing this topic and saying, do these guys honestly, seriously believe the oh. earth is flat? And I'm sure that, you know, most of them are now picturing this disc flying in space. And, you know, maybe you can touch on that, uh, Nate, as far as the biblical um, understanding on what uh, the Bible presents as far as what the flat earth, just kind of in a nutshell, but also yeah. with a lot of research for people that don't even believe in the Bible what they're starting to determine that this flat earth, uh, you know, could, could look like. Yeah. You know, uh, I always tell people to go to Genesis one because that, that's the foundation. And, uh, just within about the first 16 verses, there's so, so much revealed there, you know? And if you look at just even just verse nine through 16, 
So 9 and 10, you know, it talks about the waters being gathered together in one place and the dry land appearing. Um, and that's day three. And then all of a sudden, verse 14 and following, you've got the sun, moon, and stars created. You know, the two great lights, uh, one to govern the day, one to govern the night, and the stars also. So it's very uh, clear, you know, and, and many people, even religious people, will say, well, it's just metaphor, it's just allegory, it's just whatever. But when you read in Genesis, when you read that account, uh, there's nothing, uh, there's no metaphoric language in there. I mean, it's very straightforward. It's God is saying, you know, on, on this day, I created these things, and here was the purposes of these, you know, these items. And so I think Genesis 1 is is critical. And then you have all these other scriptures, uh, you know, that talk about the flat, uh, the flat earth, you know, the, the face of the waters, you know, um, and we know what what face means, you know, and um, we end up uh, looking at scriptures that talk about it being, you know, motionless, stationary, fixed, uh, set upon pillars, you know, and then you've got all these scriptures that talk about, uh, uh, you know, how the seas were enclosed, you know, that mm-hmm. God said there's a boundary and mm-hmm. your proud waves are going to stop at a certain point. You know, in Job 38 and, uh, you know, a few other places, there's so many amazing scriptures that talk about how, you know, the earth is like a signet ring that is pressed down into, uh, you know, a seal. And we understand, you know, you've got this flat uh, part that has whatever impression, you know, from the signet ring. And then you have the raised edges that go around uh, in a circle, you know. Uh, on a sig- on a typical signet ring. So, you know, there's so many different scriptures, and uh, I think sometimes maybe we run the risk of kind of blowing people out when we're like, hey, you know, let's look at, let's sit down at coffee and look at 250 scriptures. Uh, I think we should give people those scriptures so that they can look over them, but I really think we should start in Genesis 1 as the foundation because all of these other scriptures that talk about, uh, you know, the true biblical creation, really, um, they all go back to Genesis 1. I mean, all the items that were mentioned in Genesis 1, uh, these other scriptures kind of maybe add some detail or continue to speak about it, you know, in 20 different ways. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, Genesis 1 has, has got to be some the foundation. Yeah, yeah, they have, the fa- the they have to deal with it. In fact, I had a guy, you know, who was studying... He's from the church that fired me, and he was actually related to uh, one of the leaders. And um, he was uh, kind of getting convinced, right? I could tell he was starting to become convinced. And then the whole family pressure thing kind of got to him, and he backed off a bit. And I gave him uh, Edward Hendry's book. Um, that's a pretty thick book. Well, he went it's through a big stuff. Book. That's a yeah. big book. Yeah, and The Greatest I, I, uh, Lie on Earth. Yeah, yeah, and I think he had some, you know, secondary cognitive dissonance, and he was starting to get a little, you know, frustrated, but it's like, you know, uh, okay, so maybe you don't believe everything that's in this book that talks about, you know, against scientism and whatever else, but I said, look, you know, you got to deal with Genesis 1, man, like, you're a believer, so, Mm -hmm. you know, forget some guy who wrote something that you don't agree with, forget that. Go back to Genesis 1. Like, until you deal with Genesis 1, like, all these other books don't really matter, you know? Correct, correct. Yeah, and that's uh, really important. I mean, for you, for you, Joe, when it came to really, you know, after this uh, revelation or watching these videos, when you really realized that the Bible was indeed true when it came to creation, I mean, how was that for you? What was your reactions or what was your emotional state like or how did you view things at that point? I, w- I was kind of in a state of... Um... I'll call it mild euphoria, like, like, wow, the Bible is true. And it, it really brought it to life for me. Now, I could believe a lot of other things, but the Genesis part be- was difficult for me because there's, a, there's some things in there that science tells us just can't be. We're mm-hmm. billions of years old. We're an expanding universe. And, you know, there's a big bang. And not that I believed any of that stuff, but like, wow, it's kind of compelling what they've got against God. And... Uh, but you know what really um, helped put it together in a visual was uh, Chad Taylor's Where Are We book. That sure. He just laid it out like, um, yeah. this is what it looked like. Yeah, that's a great what book. It like. And I share this with as many people as, people as I possibly can, um, especially, well, more importantly, people that have a biblical background. 
they call, sure. they call them six Christians, that sure. this stuff is not new to them, but they've never taken the time. And last night, for the first time, um, a guy was asking me, an older guy, and he's like, really, you think the earth is, is flat? And uh, he was telling me earlier that his wife and him read through Genesis to Revelation every every um, you know every year. The next time you get to Genesis, get out a piece of paper and a pen or crayon, whatever you want to use, and draw what it is saying to you. Sure. Draw it out. And he's like, "Wow, and I've never thought about doing that." And I think we we all needed to do that in our own way to like, what mm-hmm. actually is he saying he created? And it's not a spinning ball flying through space. Um, it's just, it's ridiculous. It's very clear what God made. He made and gave us a flat earth book. The Bible is a flat mm-hmm. earth book. Absolutely. And I mean, well, you know, all, all uh, you know, with myself and, and Pastor Nate, I mean, for people that aren't aware, I got kicked out of two churches. Pastor Nate got fired from his church. I'm curious, Joe, if you want to discuss, you know, you'd mentioned obviously that you play music and drums in the church and stuff. Um, is your pastor or people, uh, you know, at the church aware? And if so, how has it been the response, especially from leadership? Yeah, you know, for, for me, it's funny because I am not a quiet person. <laughs> <laughs> I don't so think any of us are, any, but yeah, okay. Anybody that within ear range knows what I think and in, in about and what I, what I believe in. And uh, they know why I believe in it. So, you know, I don't really hold any actual official church uh, positions, um, but I've sat down with um, our campus pastor Mm -hmm. and um, gave him uh, Nathan Roberts' book to read. Very nice. Tell me, just read it and get back to me what you think. Another pastor friend gave him that one and Chad Taylor's book. Read it, get back to me, let me know what you think. Both Mm -hmm. of them came back. Nope, we live on a spinning ball. Like, wow. 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 I mean, it's eye-opening to me that people, at the beginning, right, they're all men. They're all men with sin and flaws and all that other stuff. So I can't hold them up to a higher, well, I think God holds them to a higher standard. But, you know, they can only handle what they can handle. And if I, I was just blown away. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, but nobody's come to me and say, you, you know, you can't do this, this, or that. Because That's good. Um, I, I'm almost asking and I won't say praying for that. Because then I get to go, okay, let's debate it. Then, you know, sure. tell me why you feel like what you show me in, in the word of God where it says what you believe in, it backs it up. And sure. it'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll stream that. <laughs> sure. So, so far, so far, the leadership then at the church then haven't, uh, you know, come to you, talk to you, warn you, nothing. You've just been, you know, you've got a really welcomed reception. Well, um, you know, I, I think they, they hold me at a little bit of an arm's distance now and maybe label me, oh, okay, he's a radical or whatever it is. You're right. Mm-hmm. I am radical. I'm radical for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And God, for what he created, you know, he, the word created this. And oh, so yeah, I get on fire about it. So what are they mm-hmm. going to say about it? What are they going to say? I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's good. Like I said, I mean, I was shocked with the, the first church. I was, I was even more shocked with the second church. I mean. My family had been booted literally from two churches. I mean, the first one, I wouldn't say we were booted. We were just given an ultimatum that either I give up, you know, celebrate truth and my channel on YouTube uh, or, you know, don't come to this church. And it was like, this is going to be presented to you at a later date. Don't know when, but you will get an ultimatum at some point. I'm like, well, what? how do you respond to that? You know what I mean? When you're told mm-hmm. at some later date, you know, it's some mysterious date, you know, I'm going to be approached and they're going to say, you need to pick is either the church or your YouTube channel. So obviously, you know, I decided to say, Mm -hmm. well, you know what, there's no way I'm going to put up with that. But the second church was more startling because I laid everything on the table, like right before we even started going to the church, I met with pastor three times and everything was fine he knew my channel he watched scientism exposed everything was so it is it is uh mm-hmm. it is surprising so i'm i'm uh it's good it's good to hear that uh you know they might be looking at you but um you know you haven't uh, been asked to leave or anything because uh you know we've had families over at our at our house uh, the entire family have been kicked out of the church over this issue for even just posting on social media and that's another topic that we'll get into. And then, obviously, you know, Nate, you can kind of comment on that. But, um, you know, why do you think the reactions that uh, that we get on this topic are so visceral or just, uh, you know, why, why do you think the reactions are the way they are with many people? I won't say all people, but with many people. What, what, what do you think, uh, Nate? Yeah, I mean, I, I some of it, of course, is the is the indoctrination, the the whole cognitive dissonance, like, 
No, you know, if you think about it, it can be related to pride, too, because we all think we're intelligent people. I mean, nobody thinks they're a dummy, right? I mean, let's be honest. Everybody thinks they're fairly intelligent, you know, and nobody likes to uh, find out that they've had the wool pulled over their eyes. So I think it's almost like an immediate, uh, you know, subconscious defense mechanism. You know, it may not be a conscious response. At, at the start, you know, it's more like, OK, that's crazy. I'm in defense mode. Um, and, you know, it, it's weird because just like our, our body, we have this fight or flight, you know, <laughs> syndrome. And so some people, when they freak out, what do they do? They run away or scream, you know, uh, other people, man, they put up their dukes and they just start swinging, you know. And so I think it's almost uh, related to that on a subconscious level, because sometimes you're going to have people that just start to get like, oh, okay, like, oh, all right, you're crazy. Like, uh, how can I get out of this conversation? Like, you know, I just remembered I got a root canal you to go to. And then other people will just come out swinging, you know, the, mm -hmm. the anger is, is what was so surprising. And I've shared a little bit about this before, but there was one lady from church who had, um, she had gossiped about our beliefs uh, prior to the Take on the World Conference. And she found out uh, that we had believed in flat earth. And, uh, and then after the conference, you know, she was gossiping to people about us. And, uh, once I got fired, I would have thought, you know, she would have been happy that I was fired and she would move on with her life. No, she started getting very angry and I'm sitting like, I'm the one that got fired for no good reason, you know, and my family is, is being traumatized by this. You know, we moved to Ohio to be with this congregation. I mean, that was the whole reason we moved from Idaho, uh, the Idaho-Washington border to Ohio. So like if anybody had a reason to be really upset, it was me. But no, she was angry. She was angry uh, because I told her there was no aliens. <laughs> she was angry because I warned her about Disney. I mean, uh, you know, she had a lot of uh, strong reactions to that. So you're going to get all different types. And you know what? Here's a great reaction. Once in a while, you're going to get somebody who says, like like my wife's friend that I told you about, mm -hmm. wow, okay, so you believe in this, you know, because she did talk to her about, uh, you know, the moon landing, all that. But when she finally realized the light bulb came on her head, she says, oh, you, you do you believe in flat earth? And my wife was like, yes, we do. And her response was, hey, you know what? Uh, I respect you guys. You guys are both intelligent, educated people. I'm going to give this some serious investigation. Um, so once in a while, you get you get somebody who is open. And then also once in a while, you get somebody who is a flat earther. And you're, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, you're a flat earther. Like, yep, I am. You're like, yes, sweet. You know, let's go get coffee. <laughs> I'm curious. I'm curious. Do you do you have plans? I know that I've I have given this some contemplation and prayer at some point, you know, um, revisiting and talking with these pastors that, uh, you know, had kicked us out of the churches. Uh, yep. But what about you? Have you ever have you ever thought about maybe one day sitting down with the elders or just having a talk at a later date? Yeah, I, I'm leaving that possibility open. Um, you know, for now, um, even though it's been almost four months, uh, I thought that kind of the drama had died down a little bit. But then somebody told me last week that they, for the last several weeks, they've been having like uh, ringers come in, you know, people, uh, people with doctorates in front of their names, you know, talking mm -hmm. about Genesis, talking about creation. And so they, they are still trying to do damage, damage control. control, damage control. And uh, so well, they're, they're, think, they're obviously seeing uh, your videos. Yeah, yeah they're obviously yeah. seeing your videos. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's going to take some more time. No, and, for sure. For sure. I'm not even talking. I mean, for me, I it sat could on be the, a year. <laughs> yeah. Well, the whole story, I mean, with us getting kicked out of churches, I had a major platform with Celebrate Truth on yeah. YouTube. And not once did I utter the entire story until two and a half years later. Mm. Or two uh, two years later, when I announced it at the Flat Earth International Conference in Canada in my opening address, I thought it was fitting. It was in the city and the press were there and I was going to hold them to account. But I didn't want it to be personal. I definitely didn't want to yep. do it in anger. It was based on principle. I mean, this is wrong. You just don't kick, especially a church, kicking people out 
uh, and yep. cannot support it from the Bible and yet cannot support it through your in sin. You know, this is to me was just crazy. Right. Um, so I, I was just kind of curious, like I said, yep. it could be in two, three, four years, but, uh, personally, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to when that does, that day does happen. Um, because there are things yep. that I, I do want to talk about and there'll be a lot of, you know, water under the bridge at that point, I'll moved on with many different things. And so have they, uh, but it'll just be intriguing to, you know, maybe sure. hold them to account and say, look, like, this is important. I mean, you can, you can kick me out. But this topic isn't going away. I mean, it's one of the fastest growing topics there is. I mean, oh yeah, there's a reason. I mean, I've done, I've organized three conferences, uh, you know, and I've just seen the intensity on how big this is growing, not just with Christians and biblical folk, but everyone across the board. So many people are starting to look into this and wake up. It's unbelievable. I mean, every faith is represented, non-faith, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, to me, it's very intriguing. And then getting into what Joe Garcia is doing in California, bringing this topic, but also many topics. Maybe, Joe, you can explain kind of what your vision was and the importance of a conference um, such as yours and what you're going to be doing uh, next month with Question Everything. Yeah, um, it really boiled down to the resistance that I was getting from people that just couldn't look at what I considered pretty compelling and common sense um, data. You know, these experiments, we see too far. You know, just the simple things and, uh, you know, how a lot of things could be explained on both models, uh, but none that I've, no evidence or proof that I've come across only explains the globe Earth. And um, so it was like, how do we get this information out? So um, then I came across the Flat Earth International Conference and Rally. I guess it had just happened, and, you know, I missed it. I'm like, oh, so I, I took in all those those speakers' um, talks, you know, all the guys and uh, everybody that you had, uh, men and women that you had speak, mm -hmm. and I just took it in, and I'm like, this, this needs to get out to – you know, everybody needs to see this, but it wasn't, nice. it wasn't just the flat earth stuff, the biblical cosmology. It was, you know, my, our, our life experience with vaccines, you know, mm -hmm. that, you don't want to have your kid take, why, why do they say it's a woman's choice to have, you know, an abortion, but you don't have a choice whether your kid gets a vaccine or not. You know, it's mm -hmm. these kinds of things and the pharmaceuticals and, and, you know, things like nine 11, people just need to, to, I, I would pray that they would just want to sit and just listen to the other side and make a, a um, an intelligent decision one way or the other, but to not even look at the information with yeah. an open, you know, somewhat open mind um, that it's, that's not rational. And so I started fielding these questions to the people around church and because it's such a biblical um, perspective for me, and my, my worldview is biblical. So I have a lot of people that I'm around that are biblical, you know, Christian people. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I just couldn't understand why they couldn't just, just open your Bible, please, for the love of God, <laughs> please. And, 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 and show me that I'm wrong. And they wouldn't. They wouldn't. Sure. So mm -hmm. sure. there's going to be a good, I, I want to say there's probably going to be a good 40 to 50 people um, that's looking like, maybe maybe not so much, I'm hoping it's going to be as many of those people from the, my church and the, and the, uh, the ministry wow. that I'm involved with on Friday nights, because awesome. maybe it's not so much me. I, I don't know, but I tell them all, like we always do. Don't try, don't believe me. Mm -hmm. Go search for yourself. But my passion, um, and maybe some credibility I have with them, you know, but then again, there's people that just look at me like a crazy guy, but sure. there's some people that just have the ability. And I, and I want to do some kind of psychology um, you know, checklist, like what is their background? What are their age groups? You know, is there a formula that we can say this kind of person that meets these five things will always be open-minded enough to hear what people have to say. And these other people over here, it doesn't matter what you show them, they're never going to hear it. And so mm -hmm. I was talking to a guy that uh, had a degree in psychology and he's like, you know, there, there's something there. It's, it's worldview. It's, it's upbringing. It's all these things. It's their, um, their experience in, in organized religion. It doesn't matter. It, you mentioned the Bible doesn't, it, it, you're gone. Sure. Gone. Sure. Yeah, well, yeah. The, the hip word is spirituality. I'm spiritual, right? You can be spiritual, uh -huh. but... You know, if you're yeah. biblical, it's uh, it's not it's not good. But I mean, that's encouraging that uh, people are going to be, you know, coming out and, and looking into this information. You know, I personally believe that conferences are, are a great uh, resource for people just because they get uh, a lot of great information from great speakers, but also just the fellowship in the community that's there. They find out, oh, okay, 
these guys are normal, right? Because I think a lot of people, when they start thinking of uh, these type of communities, tinfoil hats, crazy people, you know what I mean? Especially believing in flat earth. Come on. I mean, they got to be really out there. And then mm-hmm. they find, you know, there's a lot of really like decent, normal people. But, uh, you know, maybe you can explain, you know, what, what would um, someone expect coming to question everything uh, next month? Like what, uh, if you could kind of maybe talk a little bit more about, you know, why, why would someone want to come to question everything? Okay. Um, you know, there's a lot of different topics. And for a mom that wants to learn about vaccines, there's that. And we're going to have, you know, Christina Hildebrand from A Voice for Choice that knows her stuff, that's working in Sacramento, getting things passed. Um, so people are going to come in and want to just know that. They're going to want to know um, about CBD and those kinds of products. So there's, there's, there's something for everybody at this conference. But what is unexpected is, you know, they, like you said, they, they think that we, when we talk about other things, that we're, we're going to be weird. They're going to be crazy. They're, they're going to be able to identify about three things about us that they know that we're off our rocker. And, but we're not, you don't have two heads, you know, we're not weird. We're, we're normal everyday kind of people that have a passion for the word, and passion for the truth. And, you know, for us, it's one and the same. And they're going to see that they're going to see the passion that we've, that the, the presenters that are going to be presenting on the question, everything stage are well read, well rounded. They've done their research. They've done experiments. They have proofs. They know the word and they know what it is they're talking about. And um, it's going to ring true. There's not going to be people like, well, I think this, I think that, or I don't know. It's people that speak from a place of experience, having gone through it. And it's the, the people that are going to be speaking at the, on the question everything uh, stage are um, the professionals in that, in that area. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of it's a, it's a lot of fire that, that you've gone through. And I hear mm-hmm. your stories and I hear that and I go out. My heart goes out because it just, uh, I don't understand that in our community, the Christian community especially, is so, it turns on people so quickly. Um, yeah. And I, that's, you know, my prayers is that it would change, but I think what people are going to see is that we're, we're regular people, we're passionate about it, we've come prepared, um, the atmosphere is going to be one of learning, support, community, love that is there, and at the end of the day, we're all in the same boat, whether you come away thinking differently or not. We are the subject of this experiment that is being done on us. Whether you want to experience, accept it or not, we are here to help you along. We'll come alongside you, be along and help you answer your questions and get you to the other side. So when you take that journey of questioning everything, there's going to be some, a nice soft place to land. And it's, it's the people that are going to be um, at this conference, um, the speakers, the the support staff, um, and, and I'm just really looking forward to people's eyes being opened in a way that is gentle. You know, nobody's going to be pounding over their head about this stuff. Nice. You see, that's it's just, uh, and that's the reason why I've now speak of, for yourself. Speak like, for yourself. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said that I said that last week with our special guest. It was actually a really good friend of mine, Jonathan, and uh, he's like, "I really respect the fact that you haven't tried to like beat me over the head with it." And I'm like, "Until today, <laughs> I was waiting until this moment to get Pastor Nate and I to tag team and take you down." But anyways, that that is one thing, and I think it is a turnoff for a lot of people when that's all that's all you want to do is quote unquote convert them, right? You're just beating them over the head, and you're not treating them as a human being unless they accept the way you do, right? So, I mean, maybe you can comment a little bit on that, Nate, as far as uh, just the approach and, you know, from a pastoral um, standpoint, what do you think when it comes to other pastors looking at this information, what do you think is kind of that bridge that that will help them be a little bit more open and looking into this? Because it does seem like there is a wall up. And if only they would just openly, you know, look at the Bible and say, wait a minute, I'm just going to look into this. They might be blown away at the information they would see just the way you did. And many other people are uh, seeing the same thing. Well, that's the million dollar question, man. I mean, so many people have been frustrated when they've gone to their, you know, pastor, minister, elders, and they just can't seem to get, you know, their foot in the door. And um, I, I think that, you know, we have to we have to find ways to be, um, you know, just careful how we broach it. Like, for instance, 
I, I'm unashamed to talk about, you know, flat earth and use the term flat earth, but you know, what, what might not be the best approach with most ministers is to, is to walk in their office and say, Hey, you know, would you be willing to look into the Bible with me and, and uh, see where God talked about a flat earth? You yeah. know, I think, yeah. I think a, a, a better, and I don't, I say better because, um, not, you know, whatever approach you use, there's going to be some people that are just going to reject it. But I think a better approach, maybe the best approach is to just say, you know, and, and my mom, she's taught me so much, you know, over the years, she has this phrase that she always, uh, uses. And, uh, you know, I used to think she was doing Jedi mind tricks on me when I was a kid, but she would say, you know, ask someone, would you be willing? Sure. Because, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, you're, you're allowing them the freedom to say no, but at the same time, most people don't want to say, well, no, I'm not willing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. it, it's a real gentle Jedi mind trick, you know, it's not a, like a, mind trick. it's, yeah. it's not a, you know, in your face kind of a thing. So sure. I would say, you know, would you be willing to sit down with me sometime for maybe 20, 30 minutes yeah. and just look at some things in Genesis chapter one from creation. Yeah. Um, you know, I think most ministers would be willing to do that. Now, if you say, sit down with me for 20 or 30 minutes and let's talk flat earth, you're probably not going to get that meeting. They're going to be busy. They're going to have funerals sure. to do. They're going to have, you know, sure. oh, I got a Bible study. You can't miss it. Um, yeah. So I think the words that we use are important. And I yes. think how, how we approach it, if we act, you know, like, uh, if we act kind of, uh, you know, aggressive and, you know, high strong about it, they're going to sure. kind of, it's going to tip them, you know, tip them off. They're going to say, okay, but if you just act normal, you know, um, if, if there was some other Bible topic that was important to you and you wanted to talk to your minister about it, act that way with them about this topic. Why should sure. this be a different topic? And I think you're going to find that uh, you might at least get your foot in the door for an initial meeting. And then, of mm -hmm. course, you know, uh, depending on how the meeting goes, you know, you're, you want to have another meeting. But, you know, that's going to depend on their heart and where their mind is at. Um, but you know what? Uh, what happened to me with my firing and how it went down and why they fired me is very unique. But the fact that I was a minister that got fired... Uh, and there were leaders in the church that were close-minded, you know, I'm, I'm not the only one that's experienced that. Uh, and also, you know, I'm not special in the sense that, oh, wow, you know, Nate believed this. Well, there's other ministers that will believe this, sure. but, but no one's talking to them because they're afraid. Sure. Yeah. And it's fear you know? that uh, keeps people from, you know, speaking out and, and uh, you know, looking into certain things. And yeah. we have to have that, like you said, a general approach. And, and that was kind of the whole idea behind scientism exposed. And my approach really was, you know, not to even mention flat earth, right? I mean, it's scientism exposed. And it takes you along this journey showing where, you know, science has, you know, gone against uh, the narratives have gone against the word of God mm -hmm. when it comes to evolution. And you kind of start with evolution and you have them nodding their head and tracking. Mm -hmm. And then you start showing them other areas where they've never looked into. But it's very non-confrontational. It's the quotes from the scientists themselves you know, uh, yeah. and I think most people when they see something like that, and that was my idea was that it would be a resource. It was a great resource to either send someone on YouTube or get the DVD. A lot of people won't go and watch a two hour video or a film. But, uh, you know, if you uh, lend out a DVD or they're sitting on a coffee table, they would watch it. And I've got so many testimonies and so many emails mm. um, that people really were blown away with the content. And again, it is, you know, kind of showing them that, you know, they've lied about everything, but it doesn't really mention, you know, it doesn't mention flat earth. It goes yeah. kind of down that journey. And especially when it comes to the church or Christians. Because, you know, a lot of them have already basically had their eyes open to the lies of Darwin and, you know, Darwin and evolution. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's just a matter of saying, what? wait a minute, you don't think they would lie about other branches or other areas of science? Um, exactly. So, yeah, I think it, it's important to have, you know, to basically have these discussions because, you know, while I'm, I'm sure all of us would agree when it comes to the body of Christ that this isn't a salvational topic. But it is a really important topic in the same way that creation ministries will spend their you know whole life focusing on creation. Well, mm -hmm. you know, but we get, hey, you should be focused on the gospel. You should be doing this. You should be doing that. Well, it comes down to truth matters. And the word of God is incredibly important. Do we take yeah. God at his word? 
And I say that all the Amen. time. And so it's so important. And I know that Joe stands on that, you know, uh, Pastor Nate and all three of us are in agreement with that's the most important. But when it comes down to it, we can talk about all these deceptions. We can talk about all the evil in the world. But again, unless we talk about the hope and we talk about the truth that's found in one person, Jesus, and Amen. what he claimed, all this stuff is mute and it, it's not important. So, you know, that is the essence of everything that I talk about on my channel, even the, with this radio show, is really coming to understand that the truth does set you free. But who is the truth? Like Pontius Pilate said, you know, what mm -hmm. is truth? Mm -hmm. And again, maybe you can talk a little bit about that, Joe, like while we're, we're truth seekers, maybe touch on the fact of even for you and your journey, you know, what is truth matter? Why does it matter to you? Yeah, and uh, yeah, I get that same thing too. You know, especially with a lot of the Christian brothers and sisters that I speak to, is, well, you know, what what does this really matter? And the thing is, is until I clearly understood the cosmology, I um, it, it was a stumbling block. The Bible, the Word of God, was a stumbling block. I could not believe it, and um, that's that's dangerous. So I think that um, maybe as as Christians already, people that have, are uh, you know, saved and experienced that. Um, it's one thing, but you know, we're called to go out in a great commission and and go out and share the gospel. And part of that stumbling block is the science versus the Bible. And mm -hmm. if you could show them in a, a very logical and scientific way that the word of God is true based on the creation, there's no barrier there. That means the giants were there. That means that, you know, um, all those things in, in the Bible, the flood and all mm -hmm. these stories that are real, they happen. And most importantly, the resurrection of Jesus is true and can be believed 100 percent. Because if the God of the universe created this world for us like he said he did, he raised the son from, from the dead. And we can believe every single word of that. So it is the gospel. It mm -hmm. is part of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And how, I'll say it, how dare somebody say that it's not. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah well, it, it comes back to the bible it comes back to the bible and the bible is important and you know for me many years i looked at at the bible and i thought it was a joke and i know that many people look at it the same way they'll be like oh it's just a book or it's been mistranslated or there's errors and until someone actually stops and actually looks into those claims you'll realize that a lot of a lot of people are just parroting things, right? It mm -hmm. sounds good. It's like, oh, over over thousands of years, it would have changed. And you're like, yeah, that makes sense. But you never really look into it. So maybe, Nate, you can kind of comment a little bit more on your understanding there. Yeah, you know, I, I think that um, people kind of just take what others say as, you know, as gospel, quote, as law. And I think that uh, people just need to be more willing to be especially Christians, you know, like the Bereans, to say, hey, you know what, even if someone uh, whom you respect tells you something like your minister, I mean, you should be following along in your Bible. You know, you should be checking mm -hmm. things out. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, this is why I really appreciate the this approach of Joe and question everything. Like you said at the beginning of the show, you know, we're, we're questioning everything, man. Like nothing is off the table. Uh, but people are have been so... Um, numbed and dumbed down into just kind of accepting everything, like you said, about the Bible. But if, if it doesn't take very much time to research just a little bit about Bible manuscripts um, and to see how much, you know, how much weight of evidence is there. And yet, uh, as we said a few weeks ago, someone uh, will say, well, I don't believe the Bible. It's been changed, blah, blah, blah. But they'll believe, you know, something about Julius Caesar or you know, Homer and the, the Iliad and the Odyssey, and they have a fraction of the manuscripts that the Bible has, or even just the New Testament, you know, the mm -hmm. New Testament. And so if people would be willing just to check a few things out, again, you know, you use that phrase, hey, would you be willing to sit down and take a look at this, you know? Sure. Um, yeah. But, you know, ultimately a person's heart has to be soft enough, you know, and a person's mind has to be willing to say, Okay, you know, I'm not threatened by checking something out. No, absolutely. That's incredibly important. But uh, we're uh, just closing down here the second hour. So I want to make sure we got some time for Joe to uh, talk a little bit more about uh, where to find information on Question Everything 2019 and any other additional information that you would like to share. Uh, now is your time, Joe. For sure. Thanks again. Um, yeah, QE2019.com uh, has all the information. 
the ticket link is in there, the information about the hotels um, that we're calling Conference Central, Central, where all the speakers will be, um, is the Embassy Suites in Brea. So QE2019.com. And for listeners of this show, uh, if you use the code when you check out, when you're buying your ticket, um, FE2018, you get 25% off until January 23rd. So if you're thinking about coming to this conference, you know, save a few bucks and, uh, and uh, use that promo code uh, before January 23rd. Also, while you're in there, there's information about the VIP Speakers Lunch, going to be hosted by Nathan Thompson. Um, you know, we're all going to be there. Nate's going to be there. Robbie's going to be there. All of us are going to be there um, sitting together, having a great meal from Stonefire um, Grill. And if you're a vegan or vegetarian, there'll be those options as well. So it's just going to be a great time to sit and meet with everybody on the, the eve, well, the day of the conference before we go live with that. So you'll get early entry into the, into the, uh, into the room. You know, choice of seats, uh, early entry into the exhibit area, so you can see all the great stuff that the speakers have brought. But QE2019.com, just uh, want to encourage you guys to, to show up and be a part of this. And most importantly, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but, you know, 100% of the proceeds after everything is paid off is going right back to the speakers. You know, I'm not making a dime off this conference, and the reason I do that is because I'm not a content provider. I don't create these wonderful videos that are changing lives. Like the first video I saw that Robbie put out, you know, if it's not for that video, I'm not talking to you guys. So mm -hmm. it makes a difference. We need to support these guys and that are doing this work. So we put our money where our mouth is. So this is my way of being able to contribute and say, thank you, Robbie, Nate, everybody else that out there is doing something, bring people together, build that community here in Southern California where we need it so, so badly. And then give back to the people that make this possible, that put their blood, sweat, and tears. And, uh, you know, for like Nate, you know, they lose some things over it. But it sounds like God is blessing him in a way with uh, the brothers and sisters that he's uh, now in family with in this community. Mm -hmm. um, so be a part of that. Question Everything Conference, February 22nd and 23rd, Yorba Linda, California. Um, it's going to be incredible. So I don't want you to miss it. Good stuff. Definitely come out. Uh, I'll be there. Pastor Nate's going to be there. We're going to have a great time. It'll be awesome to, to finally meet you as well, Joe. Have some time to hang out and fellowship. And I, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a wonderful time. So, you know, as we close, I just want to make sure that uh, everyone uh, looks into everything that we're talking about. Exposing Amen. the world's lies and celebrate truth. It's important. Truth matters. And like I said, we'll, we'll catch you next Saturday. Revolution Radio. Please support them. The number one listening supported show. And thanks again to Joe Garcia for coming on. This is That's episode back. three. We're going to be back next week. Blessings all. See you. Take care. Bye, guys. Don't miss Celebrate Truth with Robbie Davidson and Pastor Nate every Saturday, 7 to 9 Pacific, 10 to midnight Eastern on Revolution Radio. They talk the Bible and how it exposes a lot of lies in the world with special guests, roundtable discussions, and call-ins from you, the listeners. This is not your typical Christian radio show. Celebrate Truth with Robbie Davidson and Pastor Nate every Saturday from 7 till 9 p.m. Pacific, 10 midnight Eastern on Revolution Radio.